Hello, everyone. It's John here. I'm sitting in my living room on a cold January day, just trying to stay warm and thinking a lot about Hazelnut and where we're going this year. Um, in this vision document that we've created, we've tried to think about um, where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. And the part of the way we've done that is by thinking about where we've been as almost like a seed in the ground. And part of that story is really as someone who kind of started this around my story, it's very connected to me. And where we are now is is not connected to me. It's connected to a whole group of people. I think that's what's exciting. And when I think about us growing in our next stage, it's all about making Hazelnut your story. How does this become more than just a John-centric story, but how does it become the story that you own? What is Hazelnut to you and how are you involved? And so I think there's some really interesting ways that we can look forward and, and have you involved in your voice and your story and your passion as well. One of the things that we're going to look forward to is actually continuing to grow as a church within the Diocese of Bristol, within um, Upper Horfield and Lark Lees. And, um, and part of that will be that we've got just a load of young people that have started coming along. And over the course of this next year, we're going to be really working on how to create a great rhythm for our young people where they feel that they're not coming just to like a Sunday school where they're sat down, where they can still run around and have an amazing time on the ground, but also they're getting input and they're thinking deeply about the way that they live in this world. So we're really excited about working with young people this year. The other thing is we've been able to kind of do some of our rhythms as COVID subsided for a little while before Omicron started. And we began to do our festivals like Firefest and Apple Fest. And we're really wanting to continue to do that this next year. So we're thinking about in the spring a seed blessing, um, more times for us together, might even look at maybe a group of us going to Greenbelt together, continuing to find our rhythms of prayer and communion and also growing. We'll just continue to grow and see that as an, a part of our worship and our rhythm. So we're going to grow as a church with our young people, with our rhythm of worship. Um, including the way that we grow and we give away and some more festivals. And part of these festivals, like our uh, things like our Fire Fest and our Apple Fest, is, is a great way to welcome people. And since we started um, and, and kind of broke around our land, we've welcomed hundreds of people through our site. And it's part of what we do and part of the way that we're generous. And so we're really wanting to continue to welcome people to come in and see see who we are, and to get to know us and take pieces away um, and even do things in their own area. So we want to be generous with giving away what we learn as a church and as a community. That's part of like who we are as a church. Uh, another way that we can grow is with Eden Grove itself. We're in a bit of a pickle um, in that they are closing down the church. And there's questions about how the actual building will be used. Um, we don't know at this point of me sitting here talking about this, but the dream is to see if we can work with the Methodist Church to make it an eco hub. An eco hub where our land is connected with local folks who wanna grow in there as well. And the whole site is developed as one permaculture site. But alongside of that, it's also used in the inside area as well. So maybe we create a reuse uh, a shop where you can uh, you know, bring in your own bottles and buy uh, washing up liquid and things like that. and basics as well as some really nice kind of farm products that we do seed swaps and repair cafes and um, we launch people you know coming and staying and internships and a whole number of things that we kind of work within so people come to us but also we go into the community um, and all it's all based uh, around the dream of an eco hub so that's like a, a big dream but I think it the site deserves a big dream because it's got loads of potential. And so I hope that more and more people can feel that this is part of their story as well. So we'll see, but we uh, could use some prayer on that. Um, the next thing we do is also, we've just got this wonderful network that's forming and we've had conferences and we've done, uh, we've got potty shed starting, which has got 20 different groups coming together. And what we're seeing is one thread with our network is just collaboration, how important it is to work with others. And um, that's what we wanted to continue to do this year. We want to continue to deepen roots with Arasha and love some of the new stuff that's growing um, 
with some of our new part partners like uh, Devonport uh, Baptist Church, um, still continue to Iko Dawi and, uh, and uh, um, lots of different other ones as well. Too many to name right now, um, but we're really excited about all of those happening as well. So watch the space. Uh, part of the way that those collaborations work as well is with um, some of the things that we've got coming up. One big thing is we've just launched today, um, as I say this, is called the Big Harvest, where we encourage churches and communities and individuals to grow in order to give food away. Um, and we're hoping that people can do that across the UK. That's all on our website. We're also looking to grow um, wheat across churches in Bristol, and maybe this will catch fire. And the idea is that the wheat that we gather together, we create what we're calling one bread, so it's um, a bread, a communion bread that actually represents the unity of the diversity within churches um, and our commitment to working together with an ecological crisis. Another thing we've got coming up is our schools project, working with local schools in Bristol and with St. James and Rob Smith over in Lockerlees. So these are just like a number of things that are really exciting um, that we're working on. But in order to all have all this happen, the different things that we have, whether it's uh, for us as a church, for us as a community, for the community we're placed in, or for the larger network, is we just need people to make it their story, to take on um, a bit of peace for them. So what we're asking people is to give. We need people to give of their time, um, and many people are already doing that. But we need people to find their place where they are able to serve and give. And we need people to give regularly as well. It's just the way we're going to make this all work is if people give of their time and uh, give financially as well. We're still looking to raise grants and to raise money in a number of ways, but um, yeah, it just takes money to do these things. So that's kind of the idea this coming year, our vision. There's lots of ideas out there and you'll hear more about it, but I just encourage you to really think about how you can give of your time and uh, give some money as well to this. That would be fantastic. And that's all on our website and our donations. So um, yeah. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being involved. See you.